this so if you think about it it's like decentralization of data ownership and governance and what this does is it gives us the free flow of data throughout the organization as a product and it creates this culture of autonomy by empowering teams to really self-serve their data needs Welcome to another episode of Data Strategy Unraveled. I'm your host, Kendra Reed, Principal Data Strategy Tech Specialist here at AWS. And today we're gonna to talk about data mesh. I'm sure you've heard the term, especially if you're in the data industry and wondering, you know, is it new tech? Is it a non-tech solution? What is it exactly? So we're gonna get into some of those questions as well as some other things about how to think about data mesh and go about implementing it. And to help with this conversation, I have our resident expert here, Maura Lennox. Hey Maura, how you doing? Hey Kendra, I'm doing well, how are you? I'm doing well, I'm doing well. Thanks for joining the channel today and providing us some insight around data mesh. Uh, how about you tell the viewers you know, where you're uh, zooming in from <laughs> and uh, a little bit about yourself? I would love to. Um... So my name is Moira Lennox. I am a senior data strategy technical specialist, been with AWS for four years, um, 27 years in the industry, really helping those customers modernize their data strategy, kind of making those uh, strategic decisions. Uh, I've been fortunate to work in large enterprises and startups, and my background is both a technical and a business. And so I've had a lot of fun sort of watching the space change mature. And today I'm calling from um, a very rainy California. <laughs> Thanks again for joining. So one of the first questions that we want to get into today is why are people talking about data mesh? You know, I know before generative AI was the mainstream topic, it was data mesh, right? And I feel like it's starting to come back around more now that the hype around generative AI has calmed down. But can you tell us a little bit why data mesh is such a popular term in the data community? Oh, that's an excellent question. And it's definitely been a hot topic. So data mesh is really shaking things up. And I think in, in, in a good way, it's uh, no more or less IT hoarding data in these mega central systems, really breaking the systems up into flexible uh, distributed data platforms. It's really microservices for data. So if you think of it, data mesh really uh, gives domains, think of domains as lines of business, and teams control over their data, uh, really opening up that access so that they get the data that they need when they need it. Um, it's really this big culture shift to making uh, data feel more like a project, uh, product as well, so data as a product. I think it's a total game changer for companies bogged down by old ways of using data. Definitely something worth exploring if you want to transform and deliver value to your organization. Okay. That, that really helps providing a clarification around why many customers are talking about data mesh and are looking into it. But when we are thinking about data mesh, how would you describe it? Would it be a technical implementation or would you say it's more of a mindset shift in how organizations operate? Yeah, so it's definitely not something you buy off the shelf. Uh, definitely not tech. It's it's more of a culture change around data management. As I said, um, it's really this new data philosophy focused on flexibility, automation, and starting to think of data as a product. Um, that's really breaking down those data silos and creating an architecture that is really agile. Thanks, Maura, for providing that clarification on what data mesh is and how organizations can think about it. And you called out really something important there around data products. And we know that data mesh requires the utilization of data products. It's one of the key principles of data mesh and really becoming more data driven in general for a organization. Leveraging data products is, can be really key to that. And so we can have a completely separate video on data products, but we won't do that today. And the next question I have is, what are some of the challenges and opportunities that these organizations start to think about when looking to leverage data mesh? Um, the first is organizations realize that they, they're they struggling to scale and really innovate. And so what they need to do is break those bottlenecks up um, around that central management of and owning of data. Uh, so if you think about it, it's like decentralization of data ownership and governance. And what this does is it gives us the free flow of data throughout the organization as a product. 
And it creates this culture of autonomy by empowering teams to really self-serve their data needs. Uh, secondly, though, the central IT team has really struggled um, with maintaining data quality and consistency. I'm sure you've seen that. Mm -hmm. um, and so with this new approach, we're basically empowering product owners uh, to understand their data and to use their data to create these data products. Remember, they they work with this data, it's their data, they understand it best. So they need to take on this responsibility and accuracy. And so by decentralizing this data stewardship to the people who work with the data closely, um, this really improves the overall quality and the, let's say the consistency of the data. That said though, I think the biggest change is culture. Um, it requires organizations to think of cross-functional teams Think of data scientists, data analysts, um, data stewards, product owners, really all to come together to collaborate and, and make sure they're creating a data product that means the specific needs of the business that they're serving. So really opening up change, uh, making people think about new technologies and methodologies is really important to, to the larger community to make this successful. You know, more. you touched on something very important there when you mentioned the culture aspect, right? In our previous episodes, we've talked about how culture can be really an impediment when looking to adopt a modern data strategy, leveraging data as a product, all of those pieces that go into being a really robust data organization. And so you touching on that is very important there about how this is really that culture shift and really adopting a data mesh um, operating structure. And I understand that Amazon also went through a similar transformation in adopting what they call a modern data community approach, which is essentially a pattern of, of a data mesh. Could you talk a little bit about that and kind of what happened there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so seven years ago, Amazon was having basically the same issues, the same struggles, the same challenges. And so they went on a journey to figure out how they could solve this problem. And they created what they call their internal marketplace. And so if you think of amazon.com for data, that's what they basically created. So the same way you would go to amazon.com and you would shop for things, you would select, you would discover, you would find, you could rate things. You can even create subscriptions. This is the same way you would shop for data on a marketplace. So based on, on those learnings from Amazon, AWS created a new product called uh, Amazon Data Zone. And basically we've taken all those learnings and we've created this product to really allow our customers now to create their own marketplace, their own data marketplace. Thank you for really providing that tangible example of how you know, Data Mesh has been or a modern community has been adopted within an organization. And we'll be sure to include in the description below you know, links to Amazon Data Zone so our viewers can take a look at that as well. Now, as organizations start to think about data management, you know, this they feeling feeling that this is something that they want to embark on, what is that initial first step that should take? What are those first items that they should start to do when looking to adopt this type of paradigm? It's critical to understand that a data mesh is not just another technology solution. It really does represent this profound shift in how data is handled and processed within an organization. And like many approaches, um, it has both advantages and disadvantage. And it's definitely not a one size fits all. So the first thing is make sure when you implement these changes, know that it's going to require adjustments and transformations within your organization and consider it in line with your data strategy today. So take those baby steps on your journey to get to where you need to be. That's some really insightful information on those initial steps that customers can sort of think about when looking to leverage data mesh. But the, the final question that I have for you today is, you know, what can AWS do to help customers, right? What are some of the assets or different ways that customers can leverage AWS to get started with those initial steps? Great question. So we have a couple of ways customers can start to leverage us. The first is we have a self-guided platform we call AWS Pathfinder. It was built on 70 years of 
cloud experience and lesson learned from our customers. AW Pathfinder really helps the business and the technical leaders plan and accelerate their cloud formation journey. And it's through the use of AI and machine learning, it really gives you these recommendations to create that roadmap for your organization. A second way we can help our customers is through thought leadership on how to build a modern data community. And so this is the foundation for a data mesh today. So we show how you can scale and innovate with data, how the customers can begin with decentralizing those workloads, creating those cross-functional teams, that are autonomous and really are able to be agile. Uh, it helps them mobilize for change and be able to create a long-term competitive differentiation with data. And it really instills a culture of learning. So we can help um, on that front. Thanks, Maura, for providing that insightful information on how customers can start to take those initial steps and the assets that AWS has in order to help them with that. Um, for our viewers, as we wrap this up, be sure to check out the description below where we have information on Pathfinder as well as Amazon Data Zone. Um, and we'll also encourage you to take a look back at some of the previous videos that were uh, posted to our channel. We did one recently on the modern data community concept. I encourage you to check that out and you can kind of see the similarities and differences there between data mesh and modern data community. Um, again, thank you more for joining and for our viewers. We look forward to seeing you again in the next Data Strategy Unravel episode.